Hey everybody, welcome to episode two in the TypeScript mini series in this React series. In this episode, we're going to learn how to create a component with TypeScript. So basically we're going to learn how to set the parameters that are expected to certain types. And you can also set the return to a certain type if you wish. I'm kind of following this documentation here. So this is the React TypeScript cheat sheet and they'll have examples of function components as well as hooks. So you've seen similar behavior to this in the previous episode. Now we're going to worry about creating our first component. So let's head over to our code. This is what we have currently. And for each one of these cryptocurrencies, we are just displaying the name and the cryptocurrency price. It might be the case that you want to do something more with each of these cryptocurrencies, and you can think of each one displayed on the page as its own component. This could be a component, and then we would basically re-render that same component passing in new data each time. Yeah, it's pretty simple right now, so doing it all in line is probably okay. However, as we add more, we probably want to organize our code and components. So let's go ahead and add a component. So inside a source, we will say new folder, components, and inside of here we will create a new file, and we'll just call this crypto summary. So basically just a summary of that crypto, and this will end in .tsx. Now inside of here, we're just going to say export default function crypto summary. And I went with crypto summary because back in our original code, I just had a little too many crypto and cryptos and all these different variations of the same word. So crypto summary was a little clearer to me here. And I'm just going to first define this as we would normally define a component. And what we will do is we will take this line of code and that's what we will display inside of this component. So we'll bring that over here and say return and paste that here. Now the actual cryptocurrency would come from props. So you would say props.crypto.name and props.crypto.currentPrice. So this isn't going to work quite out of the box. As you can see, we have some errors floating around, but let's first piece everything together. So back in our app, we are going to render crypto summary and we will pass in the crypto as the crypto prop. So crypto inside of curly braces right here. Close that, and then we will just need to return this. So we'll say return, and that'll fix most of the errors here. Now we just have one problem back in crypto summary, which you can see is parameter props implicitly has an any type. So what you can do as a quick fix for any of these is you can put a colon any, and that'll basically say, hey, we're going to accept anything as props here. But that kind of defeats the purpose of TypeScript. Remember, the whole point is to statically type our variables so we can avoid runtime errors. So if we just use the keyword any, we might as well not be using TypeScript. But just letting you know that is a possibility if you just run into an issue and you just can't quite figure out what's going on with the TypeScript syntax, you can just say any. However, what I want to do is I actually want to type this so we know exactly what to expect for this function. What we can do is instead of getting props of type any, we could actually destructure, which will basically simplify our code because instead of grabbing props, we can just grab the crypto object and then remove the props throughout our code. So by grabbing that crypto property, we're able to reduce the amount of code we have to type throughout our entire component. We actually haven't changed anything because this is still typed to any, so we don't have any of the static typing. Instead, what we can do is we can describe a new type and we could call it app props, for example. So let's go ahead and create this type. It's going to be defined up here. We will say export type app props and this is going to have a very similar structure to what we did up here for a specific crypto. We will just define what we expect. The one thing we expect is a crypto object. But what exactly is the type of this? Do we put object? No, not quite, because this is actually an object of type crypto. So this is the thing that we are passing into this crypto prop. So what that means is we can actually use this type over here for the type here, crypto, which in this file doesn't exist. So we need to import it in order to get rid of these different issues. So we'll say import crypto from dot dot slash app. So that brings the crypto type 
into scope in this file, which we can then say the crypto property is going to be of that type. And we can destructure to get that exact property and then use it throughout our code. Now the return type for a function, you can put after a colon here. What exactly are we returning right now? It is known as jsx.element. So when we add that, it works exactly the same way. But now if say we forgot to return a JSX element, you know, if we said no return at all, well, that's going to be a problem. But more likely, you know, if we return something that wasn't of type JSX element, it's going to say type number is not assignable to type element. So it basically looks at this and then looks at what is expected to be returned and says, uh-oh, these aren't the same type. You're dumb, you should fix that. I don't really find this return type for a component to be that helpful, but you can put it there if you want. So the way we've been doing this now, we've been defining these different types inline. If you wanted, you could define a new folder inside of source and call it types. And let's just try the example of the crypto type and this is also going to need to be a TSX file. So TSX, let's go ahead and bring this type over to that file. So we'll paste that here. And now we can change our imports. So we're going to need crypto over here. So we'll say import and we will say crypto from dot slash types slash crypto that should get app.tsx working and then similarly we're going to do the same thing in the crypto summary so instead of import crypto from app we're going to import from dot dot slash types slash crypto and that'll work now for the app props well this is specific to this component so i think it'd be appropriate to leave it right here however since you know you, there's a good chance you're going to be using this crypto type throughout your application it makes sense to put it in its own file an alternative setup if you wanted just to have all your types in a single file you could actually just rename this to something like types and then you would basically import that crypto from types but then you could include multiple things here so crypto and whatever other types you define they could all be defined in a single types file however way you want to do it should work as long as you are consistent and in this situation you probably wouldn't even need to put it in a subdirectory so you could just put it in source and i know i'm screwing everything up but this might be a better setup if you just want all your types in a single file then you don't have as many files to worry about so Let's save all this and make sure our application is working the way we expect. And there you go. Seems to be good. You can now get rid of this directory and define all of your types inside of types.tsx. So just to summarize what I was saying there, you have really three different options. You can create types inline whenever you just need to define those, such as how we had it where we had that crypto defined inside of app. .tsx, or you could create a directory that has all the types and define each type in a new file. Or the third option is just to create a types file, which has all of the types defined in there. Which way you want to do it does not really matter. Just be consistent across your application. And if you're working with other people, make sure everybody's doing it the same way. Now, another question you might have is what about interfaces? You know, maybe you've seen TypeScript a bit before, and you've seen the word interface being used versus the word type. Well, going off of this cheat sheet, there are both types and interfaces, and the general rule is to use interfaces until you need types, but it says consider using type for your React component props and state for consistency and because it is more constrained. So that was kind of my justification for using type. However, you can use interface as well. And here are some of the differences. So now what I want to do is have a drop down. Instead of listing everything out on the page, just have a drop down where you can click, choose which cryptocurrency you want, and then that information pops up. That's what we're going to be building in the next video. So stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.